Today on Engineering Newswire, we're launching jets vertically, printing paper circuits, driving Lego trains, and building power plants at the bottom of the sea. Remember all of those cool images you had in your mind when you were a kid of a jet being able to delicately land and take off from any platform, no runway needed? An F-35B test aircraft has completed the first ever vertical takeoff. Reminiscent of my micro-machine days, landing a tiny jet on a tinier aircraft carrier. The new micro-machine aircraft carrier playset. The dramatically detailed, terrifically trimmed replica of the real thing that holds 25 micro-machines. The F-35B STOVL Lightning II is a multi-role strike fighter and part of the most expensive weapons system purchase in United States history. It's a variant to the standard F-35 designed to use its lift fan and variable geometry engine to fly from aircraft carriers equipped with ski jumps, assault carriers, and smaller damaged airfields. While not a combat capability, vertical takeoffs are required for repositioning of the Lockheed Martin STOVL in environments where a jet could not perform a short takeoff. In these cases, the jet, with a limited amount of fuel, would execute a vertical takeoff to travel a short distance. Where they gonna take you? To space. Scientists at Germany's Max Planck Institute have developed a method for changing the nature of paper into conductive graphite. Unlike polymer-based flexible circuits, paper circuits are able to withstand the high temperatures that are used in the production of electronics. The team printed their target designs on ordinary paper using an inkjet printer with a cartridge of an iron nitrate catalyst. When the paper is heated to 800 degrees Celsius in an oxygen-free environment, which is presumably why the paper doesn't burn, the catalyst changes the composition of the paper's cellulose fibers into pure conductive graphite, while the unprinted paper remains unchanged. The scientists proved that the resulting carbon electronics were selectively conductive by electroplating the paper with copper. Tapping into high water pressure, Norwegian researchers are working to store electricity at the bottom of the sea in an underwater pumped hydroelectric power plant. Think opening a submarine's hatch when it's underwater. The water rushes in with enormous force. This is exactly the energy potential that German engineer Rainier Schramm wants to harness. The mechanical energy is converted using a reversible pump turbine, similar to a hydroelectric plant. The power plant turbine is connected to a tank 400 to 800 meters below the surface. A valve opens, water rushes in and spins the turbine, which drives a generator to produce electricity. The full water tanks are then emptied by running the turbine in reverse. The process currently pulls more power that can be recovered by the flooding tanks, but with an electric storage efficiency of about 80%, the process is on par with conventional onshore plants. An installation will produce 300 megawatts for a period of 7 to 8 hours, enough energy to supply more than 200,000 homes with power. Schramm's idea is pretty slick. He even foresees these plants being used in conjunction with wind farms. At strong wind conditions, excess electricity would be sent subsea to pump water out of the storage tanks, and during periods with little wind, energy would be pulled from the underwater plants. Nice job, Schramm. Henrik Ludvigsen had a dream to build the longest toy train track the world has ever seen. Out of Legos! Realizing that his own collection was too small to take on his grand scheme, Henrik placed ads in newspapers and online to ask for more blue track from fellow Lego aficionados. When it comes to solicitating freebies, it helps to give people a noble or ambitious cause to rally behind it. So it seems. Using 93,307 pieces and taking six hours to complete, the track stretches to 13,124 feet, which is about two and a half miles, making the journey for the little toy train four hours from one end to the other. Hmm, this makes me think of another toy train. Thomas, I think I can, I think I can. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Go Thomas! I thought I could. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For PD&D TV, I'm Chris Fox and this has been your Engineering Newswire. <laughs>